the intercontinental ballistic missile is now a grim reality. It cuts warning time from hours to minutes. Therefore, the Strategic Air Command must keep a force in the air around the clock to ensure decisive retaliation, even if its bases are blasted away. This is a documentary of Operation Head Start, a three-month test demonstration conducted at Loring Air Force Base, Maine, by the 45th Air Division of the 8th Air Force. It portrays the crews and support personnel who demonstrated conclusively that an airborne alert can be maintained successfully. From a pool of 24 B-52 bombers and 12 KC-135 tankers, Head Start dispatches planes on airline-type schedules with a combat-ready bomber taking off every six hours and flying a set route of about 20 hours duration. SAC must know where these bombers are at all times. Single sideband position reports refer to charted points along the route, which avoid the use of map coordinates. SAC also sends frequent Foxtrot test messages, any one of which might be no test, but an order sending the bomber to war. Command communication is thus virtually continuous. At a fixed rendezvous point, a tanker refuels each bomber. Here is the full operation. Each green bomber has fuel and an able crew for a war mission. When it turns yellow, it has become ineffective until relaunched. Head Start Operations has its finger on the pulse of all planes and crews available for the exercise. It marries a crew with an aircraft and schedules them into the pipeline of airborne alert bombers and tankers. Once the crews are scheduled for head start, they're given their initial briefing. Here they'll find out what their mission will entail. Particular emphasis is placed on the importance of communication. There is a general intelligence briefing, including the latest world news. A briefing on all safety regulations and amendments. And of course, they'll learn handling procedures from the special weapons officer. The crew, anticipating 20 hours in the air, thoroughly pre-flights its aircraft at least 15 hours before takeoff. There'll be no time for last minute adjustments. The planes must roll on schedule. Maintenance, which is the backbone of any large airborne operation, improved its efficiency and scheduling to meet the demands of the operation. Despite severe weather conditions, the crews worked around the clock on the flight line and inside the hangars to provide support to the endless chain of bombers and tankers. Close coordination with supply personnel was necessary to be sure that aircraft parts were available to the maintenance specialists. Stock levels of supplies were revised and adjusted to meet this stepped up flying schedule. After electronic specialists have checked the turret system, the guns are loaded with combat ammunition. The bomb load is carefully cradled into the bomb bay. These devastating bombs are carried fully armed, but it takes concerted action by more than one crewman to operate the release mechanism. The arming system is checked out thoroughly prior to loading the bombs. After 12 hours of uninterrupted sleep and relaxation, the crew members leave their quarters and begin the last three hours prior to takeoff. A bus picks up the crew and takes them to the dining hall where they are served a specially planned high protein meal important to strength and stamina during their long mission to come. During this time, the weather officer is preparing data to give to the crew at the pre-takeoff weather briefing. Two hours before takeoff, the crew reports for the pre-takeoff briefing. The briefing officer reviews the final details of the flight plan from takeoff roll to touchdown. After the flight plan, 
the latest weather is given, along with alternate bases to be used in case of below minimum weather or emergencies. Finally, the medical officer gives instructions coping with fatigue, dehydration, and the other physical problems crew members will have to face. The final briefing is over. While the rest of the crew files the flight plan, two crewmen go to the in-flight kitchen to pick up the meals that will sustain them a lot. These are not ordinary in-flight lunches. They were tailored for Head Start requirements by a dietary specialist. No one is allowed to bring food from home. One hour before takeoff, the crew arrives at the aircraft for last minute inspections and engine warm up. The division commander maintains close contact with the operation and makes frequent visits to the flight line. After a final review of individual emergency procedures, the crew now boards the aircraft to begin 20 hours of flying on another Head Start mission. The wheels are rolling on schedule. Under the watchful eye of personnel in the tower, the bomber taxis to the warm-up pad to await final clearance. With final clearance from the tower, the B-52 begins its takeoff roll. Takeoff, all parts functioning properly. Support personnel have done a good job. Now the crew settles down to routine flying. As soon as the plane is airborne, the command post places it on the head start track. And inside the B-52, the navigator asks the ECM operator for a heading check. Pinpoint navigation is essential. A slight mistake could trigger the Air Defense Command's network and bring interceptors up to investigate an unidentified aircraft. Further, a navigational error could possibly complicate the refueling rendezvous. As the hours pass, it becomes necessary for crewmen to supplement body liquids lost through dehydration under the pressurized conditions. Hourly position reports are relayed, and the plane's location is charted. With the aircraft's position noted, the report is authenticated, and the aircraft commander logs the time of acknowledgement. Hours aboard the bomber under pressure of the mission develop hearty appetites. Time to prepare the in-flight meals in a specially designed electric oven. These high-protein meals help to combat fatigue. The length of the mission makes it mandatory that the bomber make a regular rendezvous with the refueling aircraft. The refueling point is a fixed position constant in all sorties. Long before the KC-135 appears on the scene, radar contact is made. Soon the pilot is in visual contact with the tanker. Head Start experience has reduced heavyweight refueling from the complex to the routine. Most of the boom operators involved in Operation Head Start earn admission to the Million Pound Club. Prerequisite for membership, a million or more pounds of fuel transferred in ten sorties or less. And the bomber crews have a one gulp club for those who have taken on at least 100,000 pounds of fuel without a disconnect. When its tanks are replenished, the B-52 will continue on its extended mission, again ready for the signal which could send it to its pre-designated target. SAC headquarters frequently transmits Foxtrot no answer required messages. Any one of the messages could commit the crew to combat. Because these crews generally include a relief man, 
members occasionally catch a few minutes of needed rest with the airborne mission completed rap con takes over and gives radar landing assistance and the bomber goes into the pattern the tower alerts emergency vehicles a standard procedure for all head start landings on the ground at last 20 hours after takeoff but the mission is not complete until after debriefing the debriefing allows maintenance and intelligence specialists an opportunity to interrogate the crew on aircraft performance, radar returns, aerial refueling, and any other matters which may pertain to the mission. Although the crew is tired, it realizes that the information reported here is important to the success of the exercise. The flight surgeon is an important member of the skilled debriefing team. He is constantly on the alert, checking the crew's physical condition. As soon as engines are cut, maintenance crews go to work to ready the aircraft for its next sortie. After about six sorties, a bomber receives a major inspection, during which time another plane takes its place in the head start pool. Maintenance operations are planned for in advance. Schedules are coordinated to assure a steady flow of ready aircraft. Maintenance Control Center monitors all progress. Each unit on the base works to keep the planes in the air. All have contributed from administrative and maintenance men to snow removal teams. And flight line security is maintained constantly to protect our planes and our plans. A special SAC data control unit immediately processes the reports from each sortie to keep the records up to the minute and allow the fastest possible analysis and charting of the data. After their debriefing, many of the crew go to the physical conditioning room for a steam bath and rub down to help them unwind from the tensions of hours in the air. At last for this crew, the long flight is over and as they head for home, another crew and plane are on the runway, ready to go. This is the story of Operation Head Start, which may become one of the building blocks in SAC's alert posture. Multiply this cycle by 10 or by 100, and you can see in depth the concept of airborne alert. <laughs>